Well. Well? Yes. Yes? It has to do with a famous date. It does? What famous date? Tell me. <laughs> June 6th. June 6th. What could have happened on June 6th? D-Day. D-Day. Yeah. D-Day. D-Day. Is that the... It, oh, yeah. It's right. also National Yo-Yo Day. <laughs> Okay, Yo-Yo Day, D-Day. Is there one more thing that could have happened on June 6th? I think it is Sarah's birthday. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's wonderful. If there are no other announcements, we can make our way into worship. And um, we'll turn the camera on and invite our friends that are online to join us. I've been reading just a little bit about that lately, just so you know. I've been doing a little bit more research about online ministry. And there really is an entirely new population that will probably never come to church. And these are the people that we are reaching. And so it's wonderful to be able to have that outreach ministry and that we can invite them into our worship space and help them with prayers and whatever their needs are online as an online community attached to us. So Ani. Welcome to Big Coke Church. My name is Pastor Kim. We're so glad you are here in person and online to be with us. Today is week five in our sermon series on the butterflies. And today we talk about Lazarus coming out of the tomb and unwrapping, just like a butterfly has to come out of its chrysalis and unwrap itself. There are some similarities there that we'll be discussing a little bit. We've talked already in person here for those of you online as well. We want you to know that we've been supporting First Stop Ministries, a homeless ministry in our area. And we're developing some, um, some uh, snack bags for them. So we're asking for donations. If you happen to be in the area, we'd love you to stop by and do that. Go on our website and you can find all the information that you need. I'd like us to enter into worship with a little bit of preparing. The wheel of the year keeps on turning. Summer fades into fall and winter melts into spring and nature sings a never-ending story of life, death, and renewal. Butterflies show us how to unwrap the gift of everyday life when they break forth from their chrysalises as new creations. We celebrate the effort that breaking into new life takes as we awaken to the rich blessings of this present day. Please join me for the call to worship. In the silence of the tomb, we wondered what force could be stronger than death. When our dreams died and our safety net split, we wondered what do I do now? Stumbling through our days half asleep, we wonder will I ever awaken from this feeling of numbness? When we hear resurrection stories, we wonder. Is there a new beginning for me too? Then the love of the divine reminds us. You too are my child. You can emerge to renewed life again and again. Amen.
God of all, we are gathered together today, today excuse me, near and far, to glorify you. You have helped us on our journey of faith by giving us your Holy Spirit and gifted us relationships with each other to walk on that journey. Today, as we talk about resurrected new beginnings, help us to hear your voice in the storm and to hear your direction amidst the chaos. Ground us, O oh God, as we enter into a time of worship with you. Amen. 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 It is right and it is good to share with our God all the things in our heart, particularly the things that have us troubled, particularly those things that we feel badly about. And today we'll share together in a prayer in the We Share with God section in your bulletin. Let us pray together. <coughs> Holy God, creator of life, you call us out of our dark places, our chrysalises, offering us the grace of new life. When we see nothing but hopelessness, please forgive us. We need you to surprise us with the breadth of your spirit. Today, O oh God, call us out of our complacency and routines. Set us free from our self-imposed bonds and fill us with your spirit of life, compassion, and peace. In the name of Jesus, your anointed one, we pray. Amen. <coughs> And I was looking through Google on my phone. How many of you do that? Just flipping through Google on my phone for the headlines. And one after another after another. Boy falls overboard on ship. Lost man found dead. I mean, over and little child remains found. Over and over again, I saw pain. And it's very hard for all of us when we see these things in our faces all the time to not feel hopeless. The news and these flashes and images can give us the feeling of hopelessness. One of our parishioners brought to my attention recently about young children still being used in the United States with slave labor. Hopelessness. It's a hard feeling to overcome. And there are times we all feel that because we forget. We forget that our God is constant, that our God is always with us, and our God gives us hope in all things, through all things. So in those times when we forget and we don't have that hope, please know that our Lord Jesus Christ, by his grace, forgives us for those feelings. Amen. Today we've been doing our scripture a little differently. We'll be doing it as a reader's theater presentation and all taking parts as the reader's theater. So I am the narrator. Mel, who are you today? What's your part today? Yeshua. 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 Wonderful. Sure. No. <laughs> and Jesus. who are you today? Mary. And who are you today? I'm Martha. Wonderful. All right. Let us begin. Are we ready, Arnie? Jesus had been informed that one of his most beloved friends, Lazarus, was gravely ill. But he insisted that this illness would not lead to death, but would be used by God as a witness to the Son of God. But word came to Jesus that Lazarus had died, and all were saddened by the news. 
Jesus insisted that this was the time now to go to the home of Mary and Martha, sisters of Lazarus. Before Jesus arrived, Martha got word that he was on his way, and she hurried out to meet him. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And having said this, Martha returned home to tell Mary that she had spoken with Jesus, who was on his way to see them. Mary got up quickly and ran out of the house to see Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Where have you laid him? Lord, come and see. They led Jesus to the tomb in which Lazarus had been laid. All those who followed Mary and Jesus were amazed and moved by his love for his friend Lazarus. When they arrived at the cave, Jesus gave them instruction. Take away the stone. Oh, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they rolled the stone away. Father, I thank you for you have, for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd, standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, and his hands and feet bound with the strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Unbind him and let him go. Many of the people who had come with Mary and Martha to the tomb had seen what had happened, and they believed in Jesus. Amen. Recently, I have told you about my Curcio retreat. I went on a spiritual retreat called Curcio, and there was a rhythm to the retreat. Sort of a, a rhythm of every day, and the first day was a little unusual because there was a period of forced discomfort through silence, so that someone might feel the presence of God in silence. Now, many people hear God in silence when the world is completely still. I don't. I hear God in relationship. I hear God through chaos. I hear God through crying and through the messy. I hear God in the noise of nature and in the call of the birds sometimes and in the wind. And God, God did call me during this time of retreat. God called me during the laughter and the skits and the amazing music and the sharing of stories. Now the calling was not loud, but it wasn't really soft either. My spirit was being awakened. And it often feels a little bit disconcerting to be awakened, have your spirit awakened and to hear your name being called by God, to change it up, to dig deeper, to come out of your tomb. After all this talk about metamorphosis these last few weeks, it makes me wonder about butterflies being called by their own instinct to leave their chrysalises, to leave their tombs. As the chrysalis in our weeks-long metaphor opens further, the butterfly must respond to the urgent call to emerge and take flight. The lifespan of a butterfly after emerging is only about two to three weeks, a few months, depending on the species and the time of year that the butterfly becomes a chrysalis. But after emerging, that butterfly has some really important, urgent work to do. They must procreate their species or they will not continue to exist from the call to worship. In the silence of the tomb, we wondered what force could be stronger than death. Instinct, an urgent call, leads the butterfly to emerge to procreate while it has time. Jesus calls Lazarus from the tomb, but only after delaying his trip to see him and only after engaging Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, as you heard here. Mary and Martha, knowing that Jesus had the power to save their brother, must have been so distraught. Yet they don't pitch a fit when he arrives, when he finally arrives. 
They just asked Jesus plainly and simply. They just asked, like, why would you here? Jesus was their safety net. Their hopes and dreams were set on him, but he did not come from the call to worship. When our dreams died and our safety net split, we wondered, what do I do now? I'm sure that the women felt absolutely bereaved when their brother died and the Lord did not come. They probably wondered, what do I do next? What do we do next? The women, unlike the butterfly, were not called by instinct. They, they weren't driven by time constraints on their lives. They were normal human beings, just like you and I, expecting their family to be around for a long time. And Lazarus dies, and they feel numb from the call to worship. Stumbling through our days half asleep, we wonder, will I ever awaken from this feeling of numbness? Yet Mary and Martha were not alone in their grief, not at all. The neighbors were there. They emerged from their homes to help and to grieve alongside the sisters. Listen to that piece of scripture again. Differently. When the Jews who'd been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who'd come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. The sisters were not alone. They were in a community and more. Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor. He's been there for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you'll see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Who took away the stone? The men of the village had been there to move the stone. The women were probably comforting the sisters. The men moved the stone. Lazarus did not come out of the tomb alone. Without their help, he would have not been able to emerge. And more. Jesus called in a loud voice, as we heard a moment ago. I won't do it that loud. Lazarus, come out. <laughs> and the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth about his face. And Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Who was Jesus speaking to when he said, take off the grave clothes and let him go? The townspeople, the neighbors. What if like the butterfly, we adapt and we grow in God and our lives are changed enough in some way through God's call that we emerge different like Lazarus? What if we're not meant to do this thing, this spiritual finding of God alone? What if our own emergence isn't something we do on our own at all, but is something completely communal? I've talked with several pilgrims now who've attended the walk to Emmaus and to Curcio, and, and many of them had mountaintop experiences with God. How many, how many of you, if any of you, just raise your hand, have had a mountaintop experience with God at a retreat, a conference with a relative, or on a deathbed. Raise your hand if you've had any kind of a mountaintop experience. Wow, look at that. Friends at home, there were quite a few. Have any of you at home had a mountaintop experience with God? Think about that. <coughs> One man described his spiritual retreat experience like this. <clears throat> I had Jesus in my head. I knew the Bible. I taught Sunday school. But until going on this retreat, I didn't realize I needed to have Jesus in my heart, too. Another said, I had felt God pulling me in a different direction. For years, my job just seemed adequate, good money, but not necessarily a good fit. At this retreat, God called me to look at my profession as a vocational calling where I could give back and share my faith. And another on this retreat, the music wormed its way into my soul, and I felt God was with me instead of knowing that God was there. And believe it or not, the common thread among these pilgrims is that they all described their experience, their mountaintop experience, as communal. If it hadn't been for the community around them, nurturing them, caring for them, feeding them, sending them letters of encouragement on their weekend walk with God, they would have never heard God's voice. And I second that from my experience. 
We were not meant to be alone in our emergence. Lazarus is called out of the tomb by Jesus and assisted by his friends. His sisters have relationships with women and men in their village. And so when Lazarus dies, they surround them with love. And when Jesus appears at exactly the right time, Jesus too emerges, not just Lazarus. Listen again. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Jesus too was resurrected in the moment that Lazarus emerged from the tomb. His identity changed. He was no longer just a teacher or a rabbi who could perform some miracles. Now he's emerging here with power and assurance that he could have stopped Lazarus from dying in the first place. Why? Listen again to what was said in community with the townspeople around them. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, Martha replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who's come into the world. Jesus emerges when Lazarus emerges. He calls a dead man to life. He's now seen as a son of God and a visible threat to the Jewish leaders and the Jewish authorities. But this is his destiny for us, which is why we need to ask ourselves an important question from the call to worship. When we hear resurrection stories, we wonder, is there a new beginning for me too? God calls us to new opportunities to enrich and grow our faith all the time. And there are always opportunities for new beginnings, friends, if we listen hard enough and then act on God's calling or gentle nudging. The butterflies must emerge and unwrap and wake up or their species will suffer. They must procreate soon after emerging or their species will not continue to exist. I'm comparing us to a butterfly here. But how many of us have ever thought of that? That if we don't heed the call of God to share the good news, to live for God in Christian community that helps us grow, that our species could discontinue, could become extinct, that Christians coming together in a church could disappear. It is possible. So it's up to us. The apostles of Pentecost and the Jews of Bethany who observe the work of the Spirit are calling to us now to emerge in new life, to grow in our faith together, to share Christian life with each other, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We come as we are to a place of faith to learn, to become renewed, so we might procreate the gospel message of God is alive and God loves you. And with the knowledge of this, we can emerge together as Christians ready to take on a world of chaos and frustration and hopelessness and sin and anger and division. Are we ready? Why? Because the love of the divine reminds us, you too are my child. You can emerge to new life, renewed life, and so can the church. <laughs> again and again and again. Amen. Typically, when we do the Lord's Supper, I go up and I say a few lines, but we feel we're missing something today, and so I'm going to add it in, and that is a period of thankfulness before our time at the table. So think in your hearts about something you're thankful for, and we'll call out what you're thankful for today. What are people thankful for today? Our deacons. Deacons, the deacons, how wonderful. Who care for us, the deacons who care for us. Yes. What else are we thankful for? I'm thankful to be with my wife for 56 years. Thankful to be with your wife for 56 years. That's amazing and wonderful. Three more babies. Three more payments. Three more payments? Three more payments? Okay. That's good. All right. And when you get finished with that, I guess you get it for good then, right? Okay. The mortgage board. 
Warranties wear it out. All right. What else are we thankful for? For you. Thank you. I'm thankful for all of you as well. Anything else we're thankful for? For your friends. Yes, to support you. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tom. Loved ones. Assistance from other people for taking care of your wife, Shirley. That's wonderful, yes. That's very important. Arnie? Good health. Good health. <coughs> yes. Any other thankfulness? Thank you for the musicians who lead us in worship. Thank you for the musicians who lead us in worship. Jimmy? Thank you for the prayers that we have here. Thank you for the prayers that we have here. Absolutely. Anyone else? For lifting the what? Oh, lifting the debts. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, thankful for everything, right? <laughs> Every little thing. Anyone else? Thankful that we're really very blessed. Thankful that we're blessed, yeah. Thankful for the country we live in. And the people who've sacrificed for that country. I thought about that quite a bit on Memorial Day, actually. Um, looking at Arlington Cemetery pictures reminded me of that very much. Yes? Challenges that allow us to grow. We can be thankful for those, can't we? Those tiny little mountaintop moments. They're very important, aren't they? Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Diane? Just to be alive and face another year around the sun. Thanks will be to be alive and face another year around the sun. Jennifer? Thankful for, so yes. Bad things you get even yes, for those of you at home, Jennifer said that um, she's thankful sometimes people can't have children. And then she got blessed because she got an adopted child who's amazing. I love her. She's amazing. Yes, Emma. Family. Thankful for family, of course. Right. Wonderful. So we go to the table in a a feeling of thankfulness because Jesus is here with us, the Spirit is here with us at the table. On the night that our Lord was taken away, they had a simple meal and he had bread and he gave thanks for the bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body given for you. Eat this and remember me. And he took the wine and he gave thanks for that and he said as he poured it, this is my blood poured out for you. Old covenant is gone. New covenant is here. When you drink this cup and you eat this bread, always remember me. Friends, we'll be serving a simple communion now. Friends at home, if you'd like, go gather yourself a little bit of juice, a little bit of bread. Anything crackers will do, water, that's fine. So you can join us in our communion experience today. Kathy?
the bread of life, eat. And remember. Friends, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for your word and all the lessons that you teach us. We're thankful for the story of Lazarus who reminds us of emergence and that nothing is impossible with God. We're thankful for your table and the way that you bring us to this place with you and your spirit. Help us to hold our feelings of thankfulness all week, Lord, all the ones that have been shared here today, whether in person or online. We're thankful, Lord, for you and all our many blessings because of you being in our lives. Amen. Friends, now we have a time where we share prayers. I will also um, be lifting up names, and you can lift them up after me. So, we, so God hears our, all of our voices in prayer, not just mine. Now we enter into a time of prayer, friends, and we've received some prayer requests from this group here in the room. Friends at home, if you have any prayer requests, we'd love to hear them. Just type them out to me, pastor.bigcovechurch at gmail.com. And if you have any friends or relatives that need prayer requests, th that want to talk about prayer and that are having a hard time, please reach out. It's not just you, but your friends and relatives as well are part of this family. Let us pray. God, as we consider emerging from our own chrysalises and listening to your voice, whether in the chaos or in the small, still moments. Strengthen us, O oh God. Strengthen us as we try to emerge. Give us the wings to be able to take flight. Give us what we need to hear you and to then act on that hearing. God, we know how fragile the world is right now. And as we were driving last night, God, a little private thing here, we were driving last night, God, and we saw this amazing moon. And the moon was so orange and bright and huge. And I said to my husband, and Lord, you heard me, I said, my God, we're on a planet. A planet. And it's fragile. It's a planet out in space. There are so many things that can cause us to be disrupted. Not just human interaction, but life on our planet. So God, we lift this up to you in our time of emergence. We ask that you also give us ears to listen because often there's chaos and division because we don't hear each other. Today we did hear prayers come from this room and there are many that we lift up today, Lord. We lift up Sue and Rex and Jonathan and Dawn and Dave and Sarah and Shane and Megan, Megan, and Sam, Sam. and Gary, Gary, and Diane, Diane. and Sandra, Sandra, and Jeff, Jeff. and Tom, Tom, and Allison, Allison. and Neil, Neil, and Dawn, Dawn. and Bob, Bob, and Shirley, Shirley. and Anne, Anne, and Janie, Janie. and Doris, Doris, and Helen. And Lord, we lift up uh, a family that's trying to sell their home, and we ask that you kind of wrap them in a blanket of comfort during this time of anxiety and, and give them what they need, that the buyer for their home will be just the right buyer, Lord, where they can enjoy many, many beautiful years in their home as this couple has enjoyed. We also ask you to be with a boss of a loved one who has a father who's in pain. We ask you to be with them and comfort them in their pain, O oh Lord. You know all of what is going on in our lives, God. You know the things that we don't talk about, the things we can't express in this room. So we ask that you touch us in our own private ways in our moment of silence here right now.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On Communion Sundays, it is a tradition now to stand and recite the Apostles' Creed at a declaration of our beliefs. Would you stand, please? Those who are able. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The resurrection story we have heard today reminds us that all things are possible with God. We are a community of believers who have committed ourselves to being followers of our Lord Jesus Christ and to serve the community. So as Christ's people, we share what we have. At the back of the room, there's an offering box that supports the ministries of the Big Cove Church. There's also a box to support the Presbyterian Home for Children. For you at home, if you feel led by the Spirit, you are invited to share the ministry of this church through the, our website, which is www.bigcovechurch.org. And now let us worship our God through the gifts that we bring.
blessings, O oh God, come the blessings that make life possible, even the very gift of life itself. In gratitude and thanks, receive from our hands this portion of our labors. By your Spirit's leading, may we use these gifts to bless the life of others with the assurance of love, with the promise of hope, and with the course of justice. For these things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Because he lives, we have it all. I think we know that, and we are reassured by that, particularly today in the story of Lazarus and the butterfly. Let us sand and sing, Because He Lives. We can face the future because we know on all certainty that God is with us as we sometimes even are cocooned in our own little places, unsure if we should poke through and emerge and feel God's presence in that mini mountaintop experience. God is with us, friends, and God loves you, and you hold the Spirit in you. Now wherever you go, shine the light of Christ. Amen. Amen.